Um, we were discussing a little bit earlier on when people couldn't hear us about the experience of All-Ireland Final Day and I was saying it was down there in Crow Park and there's been a lot of conversation about the atmosphere at Crow Park and mm. the vibe around it and what mm. should or shouldn't happen and I, for me, I would leave the match day experience at Crow Park as is. It's absolutely fine. I don't need to be in there four hours before mm. a throw-in. We were in there about 45 minutes or so. We were able to get the burger and chips, take our seats, sit down, enjoy it a little bit. The weather was obviously crap and that does impact on it, particularly we were like three, two, two rows back. You're, uh, you're just in the danger zone there of when it rains you are getting wet so it's a little bit like but look mm. by and large I think there's a perfectly fine job going on I wouldn't think about that too much um, but I just felt like going in and around Crow Park before the game wouldn't there be a great opportunity looking at the homecoming last night to shut down Crow Park on an all- on All-Ireland final day at least half of it bring in food stalls like game simulators drink mm. stalls uh, you'd have a pile of like former players milling around you like little bits of build up here and there you could have like an audience building there fan zone type thing mm. uh, tailgating type thing um, you could have that going on from like what the games at half three you could have that going on from 10, 11 o'clock in the morning as it builds up to the game and really like I mean even if you forgot about the right cultural reasons to try and use a admittedly grubby main thoroughfare in the city uh, for the right reasons culturally like even you'd make money out of it mm. it's, and it's not it's not to do with the GA it's a Dublin City thing um, but I'd, I really would urge them to have a look at something like that because I think that of all the days the proximity of Crow Park mm. Let's do it. It's good shout, like, because there's so many articles written in the Irish Times alone about the state of Dublin city centre and how grimy it is, and particularly O'Connell Street. That should be a Champs Elysees. Like, if you look at it, it's amazingly wide. Should be beautiful. beautiful street if you look at it objectively. But then you walk through it, and the vibe is completely contrasting to what you see. Yeah. It's just unsettling. Like, you walk by, and you're just on edge the whole time. And nine times out of ten, absolutely nothing happens. But you just have a sense that anything could kick off at any point. And also, even besides that, yeah. it's just a bit dirty. This this idea, by the way, wouldn't solve that. But no, no, it as, as a starting block. But like nothing is working at the moment, and the dash suggestion, there's, that helps two things. First of all, the talk since Sunday has been like the lack of entertainment around the All Ireland Final. That mm. they rely solely on the game itself, which is fine. But there's no big day out or no Super Bowl equivalent. And then the second thing is yeah. that's one proactive, positive solution to the problem of O'Connell Street. So it kind of works in both ways. I'd love to see it happen. You could make it like a kind of a food festival thing as well, like where they, they, you're, if you're going to the match, um, like if you're going to Game and Croker, your your options are really sh- crap food, like basically burgers yeah. or whatever, chips like along the way in these like foul swelling kind of vans, um, spewing out crap or whatever, and make make it a festival and make it a, make it a thing. It's not a bad call, like because mm. O'Connell Street is it is quite sad to see where what it has become. Like it's I, you've, you've really no reason to be there, and you don't really want to be there much of the night. The only collective community thing you can do going in on Ireland Final Day is to go for a pint. Mm. That's brutal. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. Brutal. And I know there are people out there who don't want, uh, famously don't want eight-year-old kids going to uh, All-Ireland Final Day or the semi-finals. Tickets should be reserved for other people, I think was the point that was made a few years ago, mm. which I couldn't uh, disagree with in any more sort of vociferous terms. But um, I'd like an alternative mm. of something to do. And I think that that would be a good one. And, and as I said, Wine like, or shots or... No, yeah, no yeah, points, yeah. So. wine and cheese. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I, I went that. from I remember going from uh, when Galway played Armagh last year we, 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 we went from a, a Gaelic Games match to a wine tasting afterwards nice. it just happened to be the same day all Central Condor which was probably a first ever the uh, dichotomy of Johnny Ward right there in a mm. nutshell yeah nice wine and a, and, a, and, a, and a good game of football I wonder um, yeah like the two examples so far so it would have worked really well for the All-Ireland final with Dublin in it and then the homecoming last night with the football team yeah and the captain of Dub and like a big Dublin presence in the team so it worked there but I wonder if you're getting two non-Dublin teams involved would you still attract be a different. It, it would be a different thing right but like I think you'd have enough businesses commercial support um, it, it would be a smaller scale thing right no question about it like as in when Dublin are playing the All-Ireland Final it's um, it's how do, I, how do I word this that's the correct way like it's not the same it doesn't. It doesn't capture the city clearly, in the same way that when Dublin are playing. So yeah. you're going to have that knocking. That's just the way it is. Can you have but, beers on the street then, or is that allowed? Oh yeah, I think that's. Can, what yeah. I think part of shutting it down. You would. Mm. You, Dublin City would be would be saying, "Hey, Dublin City, can we serve pints here?" Yeah, sure. That sounds, that sounds like. An, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like if you, if you're shutting it down as a um, thing, but it shouldn't. Like I'm saying, I don't think it should be only about having pints. It should be. 
whatever it is, food. So I was at the yeah. Mon- had the, had the um, pleasure of being at the Monaco Grand Prix early in the year, and they clearly have to shut the city down to facilitate the thing. Um, but they have loads of stuff going on, like they have mm. little Formula One simulators. They had like this thing where you could go in. Um, myself and my wife went on and took on two random people at how quickly we could change a tyre so they have all that sort of stuff going on there's no reason you couldn't have similar things mm. wrapped around this it'd make loads of money local business would be delighted with you mm. more people on their bikes Johnny because the traffic will be there'll be a minor um, effect on traffic obviously in the area yeah. over the course of the day which I think it'd be we could live with that it's funny as well the, the bars in or around O'Connell Street it's questionable what business they do generally um, like do you ever go yeah. for a pint in, in no. sin, like I, I would think like Sackville Lounge or somewhere like that that I, I'd go to but other than that like uh, Shifty Lad makes a suggestion here the one thing that could and should change is it being on a bank holiday weekend it's a good, good shout actually put the All-Ireland final on bank yeah weekend. I think that's what Shifty Dad means here anyway but yeah because then I suppose you are creating an idea of a festival and people have more time and they can definitely stay up but yeah you could definitely make more of an event out of it because it's such a huge deal but it does feel like um, it only gets going like from a TV event anyway from about 3 o'clock on yeah. a Sunday and she, you're getting about your day beforehand and it's just like oh yeah the finals and I might watch that especially for if you have no yeah. yeah especially with no skin yeah. in the game but so it could be a good thing as for the homecoming last night look I saw we have a video there of um, Vera Pau and her staff being presented on stage and the the crowd cheering them and and Pau celebrates fairly wildly enough like dancing around the place and mm. the, da- the dance of somebody who's leaving what a dance of relief yeah that she might it might be all over for her and then she can walk That's away relief. or or the dance of uh, a job well done in her part as well she might think that definitely felt like she was she was going full bore by way of I think she was it, it was like, like a defiant I, dance I think if, I think if she was staying on you wouldn't be going that you wouldn't do that dance like because I mean there was no real reason to dance like Ireland had what seven shots on target in three games or something I mean it wasn't like you. I wouldn't I, as a manager I wouldn't be like very very proud of of Ireland's you know um, offering over three games and I wouldn't be dancing in front of the fans because this is like it's a little bit of a gimmick this thing as well I think that there's so much support for this team um, you know it's, especially among like young aspiring girls who want to play for Ireland I think this is massive for them and, and the results are a little bit incidental and like it was a great crowd to turn out but I think she wouldn't have done that I think she knows that this the end is probably nigh and uh, it was interesting to see the body language of the players behind her I think there was it's, it's interesting to look at their faces as as Vera was enjoying herself mm. because it, it was mixed to say the least yeah here she is on screen now for people who can't see so the, all the coaching staff are being applauded and they're reciprocating and then Pau stands out a mile for dancing in the corner but I was, I was like first of all fair play because mm. this is all supposed to be escapism anyway this is the whole point mm. of it so first of all fair play and then secondly I'd love to know what's going through her mind at the moment because this whole fallout after the Nigeria game with Katie McCabe like I imagine that type of thing happens all the time where you're, the captain turns to the manager and said get so and so off and bring that person no on and then that. the manager's just like shut up but it seemed to be prolonged yeah but the problem is that it went to the press conference afterwards yeah. now that was very pointed and maybe she knows well that she's gone because why would you say that about your captain well, why would you make an example of her if you're going to stay she on she has been very frank it's one of the things we discussed even during the tournament that maybe she just at times can what we would perceive and maybe she doesn't at all overstep the line in terms of her commitment around what she could say you know like we talked about the defensive thing and the yeah. well they're a little bit the great players but they're a little bit slow did not really need to say that but she's seriously direct anyway totally but I don't remember her going to that length mm. where she's saying Katie McCabe is not the manager Katie McCabe let herself down here though yeah and you, you have to you have you don't do it like in such an obvious way if you have to, want to have a word with the manager you don't you're not the manager like and yeah. I I honestly think Katie McCabe completely let herself down there. That's not her job. Like I remember, I mean, if you do it, do it in a subtle way. It's the culmination of a few years of frustration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's she probably again. It's probably coming to the end. Yeah, I remember one example of uh, Fernando Torres and his peak at Liverpool getting taken off away to Birmingham City when Rafa Benitez was in charge, and Torres is walking off, and you can see Steven Gerrard in the foreground, and he's shaking his head at Benitez, like, "What are you doing taking Torres off? He's our best player." And that was the end of it. I, this this thing with this these type of things happen all the time, but there's clearly such a massive tension between the pair, which we alluded to. Remember the uh, pre-tournament press conference in Dublin just before they flew out, and you could call it a knife for the tension between the two of them, like mm. sitting the distance between myself and Johnny here, and it just felt there was uh, a palpable sense of unease between the two of them. And McCabe actually acknowledged that too that sometimes they they argue a lot. And this has gone to the other side now where McCabe's gone through the three games. She was like, basically, what was all what was the point in all of this? Like, we didn't give it a go. There's um, mm. nothing more classy in sport than a manager who's been riled up by 
clearly riled up by a player refusing to take the bait. There's nothing more classy than the press conference afterwards where they go... Katie McCabe is a class act. What a player she's been for Ireland. Yeah. How could how, you know you couldn't you know that sort of you can you can choose your words. Mm. That um and it feels that, like that's probably not her style though. In fairness, like you said already yourself, like I don't think she can hold back. Like those one of the, the probably the best things about Alex Ferguson's management was his ability to refrain from uh, calling his players out in public mm. most of the time, mm. most of the time. Mm. But often he left it behind closed doors and then completely let himself down when he released his book right after retiring. And in that press conference, literally did a chapter on each player that caused him a problem and just called out all the players. I, the more you know what I mean? the passage of time with Ferguson, to be honest with you, I, I was like, this guy's ruthless. Like. Well, and also brutal and totally out of kilter with obviously what we think uh, the best practice around modern day leadership or management is. I mean, I know that obviously we're talking about somebody who was at their heyday a lot of years ago now, but... um, Why isn't Vera Powell loved then by the squad in general? Like, what is it? Why isn't she getting a... uh, Pat Tolan writes about it today. It is a bit strange. Like, what's the elephant in the room here? Like... Well, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, and obviously the FAI. She's done a good are, job. Are, do you think? Let's put it another way. Her dancing last night when she came out. Would you say the dance is justified based on the performance throughout the World Cup? As I said, I think the dance wouldn't happen if she was staying on. And like, look, I don't want to get too far down the road of somebody having a bit of a jig on the stage after. Like, it's the homecoming is absolutely legitimate. The turnout is legitimate. Yeah. It's right that we acknowledge what's happened here regardless of whether we've progressed or not like the the tournament in the round has been a raging success analysing whether Vera Powell should have done a 10 second yeah, jig is probably see, doing it a bit of a exactly. disservice I think um, there's a lot of distraction around it but if you look at it against the Olympic champions they were 1-0 up against one of the better sides in the world Australia they lost by a penalty uh, and against Nigeria they drew nil all uh, and they, this Nigeria side's good like they beat Australia and it's first ever World Cup and the teams come on leaps and bounds like just a few years ago that team was struggling mm. so in many ways Vera Pau has improved the team massively but I suppose th- yeah. then the next question is well we're not getting the best out of our two attacker attacking players because Denise O'Sullivan didn't have a great tournament by her own yeah. standards we're going to talk about Derry City and that but it was just so weird watching an Irish team in Europe scoring three goals because the Shamrock Rovers have scored one in their last six now I think and we do have a problem across Irish football generally where we're just not very good at scoring goals at the moment and uh, the women's team is a bit like that so watching Derry was like this shouldn't happen you've scored three goals in totally, a game yeah. I'd be careful what you wish for by the way as well because I had a look at last night at the um, odds on who the next manager would be third in the list oh I heard this go on yeah Phil Neville that's right yeah Phil, Phil, just, Phil, just be, Phil just was fourth in the list Colin Bell I'd be go just yeah. I, I hang on a whole fire there caller is who's what I'd say to you Tom Elms who's involved at the minute yeah, and Eileen Gleeson who was involved before that so yeah. like two good options for sure and a bit of continuity there but I just think beyond that we want to be careful one thing that we want to touch on and Vinnie Parts is sitting outside and he's, um, he's he's itching to get into this conversation and to tell us to shut up so he can get his air time but one thing that I didn't want to touch on was a tweet that I put out last night that took the internet by, by storm okay, well, Touch that as a tweet. Um, I put it. Yeah, <laughs> what, what a quote! Th- thanks for uh, thanks for explaining. On, as as me, Ger me. would say, thank you for explaining the joke. Um, I put up a tweet last night because I'd seen a clip of David Clifford doing what I felt what uh, caught me by surprise a little bit at the time as a uh, an outstanding bit of skill. It was a little sort of uh, right hand to I think was it left toe uh, solo, and it was the the fact that the yeah right hand to left foot and the f- hand right on top of the foot do you know what I mean like normally you see you're dropping the ball from a couple of feet onto your foot and you're trying to get that bit of a spin and Mm. you're sort of keeping motion but it's felt like um, there's a uniquely Kerry style of football that I'd say Galway actually to be fair probably as close to it as it comes in terms of the other counties around the country but it just struck me as a remarkable little bit of skill I did feel I'd put it up and you get one or two little nibbles and that'd be about it Johnny but no as I said it has taken the internet by storm and uh, that's a joke by the way um, <laughs> it's been a lot of interesting reaction to it um, Paddy Willis saying Tomas O'Shea was a legend at it and uh, Shawnee Thornton jumping off the back of that saying left hand down to the right boot going full whack down the line poetry in motion uh, Spillane used to do it at full tilt said Eric Phelan um, and then uh, <laughs> and then there was like a lot of other reaction uh, D- D- <laughs> Dylan Gaynor saying Clifford has invented a solo now <laughs> FFS <laughs> which is not of course what has been said uh, Dermot uh, says oh yes let's talk about it FFS as if it mattered um, that's actually a foul says Fred Mallon and there was a fair bit of that uh, Joel Sullivan does his hand actually leave the ball if hand is in full contact with the ball at all times is it technically a solo or a foul mm-hmm. 
I mean, lads, come on now. But uh, it did. But it, go on. Sorry. Oh, I just got us thinking about that little bit yeah. of underappreciated skill in yeah. sport. That's kind of what that really did. Mm. Yeah. I, I was thinking of a few examples there we were yeah. going through that, but I don't know if it's so much a skill, but. Um, Long foot passing in Gaelic football, I think, is oh, underrated. Yeah. Paul like, Galvin style, sort of. Galvin style, uh, Dear McConnelly as well, being able Paul to pick Conroy's out, being able to pick out a pl- uh, player with their foot, and it's very yeah. direct passing, and also it's mm. the type of pass where it actually helps the momentum of the recipient. Mm. Um, I and think even I see Conor McManus in yesterday. You know, he, yeah. he likes the mark and like. Yeah, yeah, likes the know, mark. The, hates the, foot, the, the foot pass is still beautiful. Like. Um, and also in soccer terms too, a skill I always appreciated, which was never able to master myself in games, was um, the ability when you're receiving a pass on its way to you to look behind your scanning. Corner, scanning. Now, I, I, I always uh, struggled with doing that and it's an f- unbelievable skill because it buys you so much time. Yeah. And the Class of 92 talk about it, how um, the, the, it was drilled into them. Like if they mm. didn't look Skulls before... Skulls would have been a big Skulls scanner. Skulls a big one, they? yeah. If they, if they didn't look before they received the pass blow up in training yeah. and you'd be given right. an earful yeah because it's like it's no good receiving the ball with facing your own goal because you don't know what's behind you so uh, you can't progress as a midfielder I like how your uh, criticism of your own performance is not actually football related it was like you know, if I could just have been a bit of a better scanner a I bit of a better scanner oh yeah it's life, made it. it's life made skills it. you know it's life skills but uh, <laughs> there's a load of um, load of little su- like subtle skills now that I love but that tweet I had, to, I had to watch that a few times to appreciate it. Tell you one thing, you'll be yeah. You should, though. you should watch it. You should like that's 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 the whole point. Like it's it's little one little of little. no, they'd be scanning the lovely rooms in your new house in Whitehall. <laughs> well, you've moved. It's one of those little things that that uh, nobody really that's talks about, days. and by and large, you don't want to spend your entire life talking about uh, solo and football. But it's just a little mm. thing of beauty that I feel culturally. No, I like that. It's kind yeah. of unique to carry a little bit of Galway seeping in, and I'm having it. What's an underrated it's skill in hurling? I left them oh, there's there no, there, there one thing that is that is that there's no underrated skill in hurling because, like you know, well, if anyone can suggest is something. So James Boyle here says Henderson uh, never shouts a clap during a match to make a sub. Clap would rip into pieces. I remember Henderson being taken off at Old Trafford and laying into clap. Mm. That's and, a bit different, though, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, it's the same thing where you're still chatting back to your manager. Why'd you take me off? <laughs> it's the same thing. Like, yeah, it happens all the time. It isn't a big deal. Yeah, it's the fallout. Really, is kind of why this whole thing has fallen apart I remember um, a, a player who shall remain nameless telling me one time that he was playing under Stephen Kenny and he pointed out he, he shouted over to Kenny and he's like will you take such and such off he's doing nothing right in the middle of the game mm. and Kenny's way of dealing with it was he called said player into the dress room on the Monday and he goes um, I just watched the game back there you didn't do much yourself Quite like that, and that was it. Yeah, that is good. And that was that the, was it. That's that was the end of matter. And yeah. one of the members involved now is actually now a manager, and probably huh. learned from that experience. Well, I think there's. Yeah, look, I don't know. Somebody has pointed out three Doctor Phils analysing the dance. So Sam McGowan. Now there's a little bit of that about obviously our, our yeah. thoughts about what Katie Katie McCabe is doing as well. But I do think that is Katie McKay brought into the room at the FAR analysing the what, what did they call it the full and yeah full honest, and comprehensive comprehensive review. review. review like if you. if she's not. It's pretty clear what her feelings are now. Mm. And there was probably a little bit of that going on as well. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I'd be interested to hear Vinny's thoughts. Oh, yeah, I, the know, old I knew chat. you were getting there, all yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Park it, park <laughs> it and that move reaction. on. That's, that's uh, Cullum's, uh, Cullum's way of parking and move on. Right. Thanks a million for coming in. Thanks it's for having me. Pleasure as always. The, yeah. the, the, you make it so easy. The pressure of the week hasn't shown on you an iota. It's a first world issue. I mean, no, not that. It's, it's, it's not. moving house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a good thing, like.